Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. We are so excited to have you. Welcome. We're so happy that you joined us this evening. My name is Kelda Senior, and I am with Black Orlando Tech. And I is super excited and honored to be partnering with the Orlando Museum of Art for Create, Listen, Learn. If you haven't heard of BOT or want more information about BOT, you can visit our website, blackorlandotech.org. And just as a view, we're on an aggressive mission to train and inspire 10,000 minorities to enter into tech by 25. And we're doing that through partnerships like OMA, as well as some amazing other partners and supporters throughout the Orlando and Central Florida community. Our focus and our mission is to help accelerate minorities, particularly Black minorities, um, economic advantage and empowerment through technology careers. We, we know the power of technology. We know high tech careers are in demand now even more than ever. And we are on a mission to help inspire as many people as we can to see the advantages of a tech career or a tech entrepreneurship journey and, and, and see the benefits of it, see the benefits from a salary standpoint, from a flexibility standpoint. Tech is just awesome. And we invite you to learn more about our mission. Our website is there, blackorlandotech.org. If you want to join in any of our programs, we have some um, technology cohorts that are kicking off uh, this month, as well as several other opportunities to get involved in our mission. So thanks so much, Oma, for, for letting us partner with you for Create, Listen, Learn. We are super excited about this exhibition, which is going on now through Sunday. And we'll give you some more details about how you can reserve your spot to go and visit this exhibit in person. But if you aren't able to make it out this weekend before Sunday, before the exhibit wraps up, you're in for a treat tonight because we are going to be broadcasting several of the uh, several of the artwork that has been uh, featured. We're going to announce uh, best in show. We're going to hear directly from several of the artists. So you are in for a treat. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit the share button. Tag a friend, a family member, a coworker. Anyone who you think would be interested in tonight's live broadcast, anyone who has a passion for the arts, who just have a for uh, learning more about OMA and everything that uh, is going on in our amazing community, be sure to tag them and be sure to share this broadcast. So I'm joined by uh, several other amazing mover and movers in the Central Florida area. And yay, our friends are all here. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So you're going to have an opportunity to learn more about BOT and several other um, amazing organizations that have partnered with OMA for Create, Listen, Learn. So of course, our friends at UCF, you know, are always, they are always coming through in a clutch. So Glenn, give us, give us a lowdown about who you are and what's happening over at UCF College of Arts and Humanities. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Kelda. Thank you so much, uh, Orlando Museum of Art. Uh, my name is Glenn Samuels. I am representing the uh, College of Arts and Humanities Alumni Board, um, and I am the Community Outreach Chair. We have so much going on. Um, a part of being a part of the Alumni Board, we reach out uh, into the community and just, you know, we want to get involved and show the community our support. Uh, so I am here not only with College of Arts and Humanities, but also the UCF libraries. And so um, we have our diversity week that's coming up um, in October. It's October 19th through the 23rd. So look out for that coming up. All you knights out there, um, go ahead and get involved. You can look at our uh, current lineup of events um, at guides.ucf.edu slash diversity week. Um, and then also along with that, we have coming up uh, the Eclectic Nights, which is an event that happens every year. It's a partnership between UCF's um, College of Arts and Humanities uh, and the Orlando Museum of Art. So if you're an artist and you're a knight and you want your work to be displayed at the Orlando Museum of Art, be sure to get in your submissions by Sunday, August 16th by 4 p.m. That's coming up soon. So uh, look out for um, OMA, of course, on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, go to the website, get your submissions in. Um, so yeah, so I'm just excited to be here. Always um, a fan of great art 
And I'm um, looking forward to continuing this partnership with OMA and Black Orlando Tech and Nerd Night. Absolutely. Thanks, Glenn. Tali, tell us more about Fusion Fest. Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. It was really an honor to be part of the selection committee. And uh, I'm with Fusion Fest. We are heading to our third year. We are a nonprofit project of the Downtown Arts District with support from Orange County government and the city of Orlando. And our mission is to celebrate the great diversity we have here in Central Florida um, by bringing everyone together and celebrating it through performing arts, music, dance, fashion, um, interactive activities, visual arts. Uh, what else? Food, of course, <laughs> we, can, we can forget food. And uh, it's just an amazing uh, project. We, as I said, it's our third year. We not only have our big festival on Thanksgiving weekend, we also have monthly events now. So, uh, and of course, all with, all, with safety protocols in place. Um, so if you want to come and learn more about your neighbor's culture, come join us at one of our events or at the big festival that's going to be on November 28 and 29 in downtown Orlando in front of the Dr. Phillips Center. Um, what else? We also have call for artists and vendors. It's open until September 1st. So come join us. Awesome. Thanks for so much amazing things happening in our community right now. It's like a nice a shining light in the middle of all the craziness. So um, that's awesome, guys. Thanks so much for giving us those updates. And, um, and Jonathan, of course, Oma always has things pop in. Of course, <laughs> tonight is part of First Thursdays, the infamous Thursdays um, that Oma is known for. So Jonathan, give us give us more of a rundown about what's happening uh, with First Thursdays and beyond. Yeah, thank you. Um, this, uh, it's it's been a little different, so we're, we're actually still getting used to everything ourselves, but um, yeah. Yeah, the works are up all, all week. Um, People's Choice is also open. Uh, typically we do that like the night of the, the party, but we're keeping it open the whole rest of the week. Uh, I imagine Jimmy's gonna have links for everyone to, to, to kind of um, yeah. vote on that as we go here. And then, um, yeah, we're running extended hours on Saturday. Um, it's part of our date night, a little uh, collab with Pig Floyds. Um, and we'll have info to, to participate in that as well uh, coming up. And yeah, the extended hours are going to be from, normally we, we close at 4 p.m. on weekends, uh, and it's going to go from 4 till 8 uh, instead. So it kind of gives everyone the extra time to get in. And yeah, we're um, excited for that. And the best in show, and of course, all the works are... Um, from this exhibit are gonna be available during those extended hours as well. Uh, tonight, we are announcing Best in Show, uh, chosen by by us <laughs> um, <laughs> on our, our little panel here. So um, that'll be later on. And yeah, we're, we're gonna keep the info going all night. So I don't wanna like, yes. you know, <laughs> overdo it all at once, but right. yeah, we've, we've got a lot going on too. And, uh, and we'll, we'll get there as we go here. Yeah, yeah, Jonathan, kind of on that that point of like, there's a lot going on. Like, um, how has Oma sort of like pivoted and helped to make sure that the experience that we're all used to having when we go visit um, Oma or d d under normal circumstances mm -hmm. that we still kind of have that same sort of effect? How how is Oma shifting and pivoting? Yeah, it's been it's been interesting. Like, we've kind of been looking to other um, major museums to to just see what everybody's doing and what what has worked and what would work for us. Also, um, we've reduced our normal capacity to um, I call it fifteen on the fifteen. <laughs> it's like a, a fifteen people allowed in every fifteen minutes. Um, this exhibit's great because even if you show up wanting to um, see the museum, like the, the uh, museum proper, uh, and we're at capacity, you can kind of like go see the first Thursdays in the meantime. Um, but that's that's kind of how we're doing that. It's like everybody else is doing with the, you know, masks are required and all of that. There's literally yeah. hand sanitizer like every 15 feet or something like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's just kind of rolling with the punches and, 
Um, so far it's worked really well and we're, we, we feel, I feel safe. Um, and when I'm working up at the, the front, <laughs> usually it's where you can find me. Um, so yeah, that's how we've adapted. And with the first Thursdays, uh, it, I actually, I mean, there's, there's pros and cons to it as there are with everything else that's happening, uh, that people are having to kind of curb their, um, their normal, normalcy of everything. But the extended week of the exhibit being up has been like mind blowing of, of how people are able to go in and we've had a ton of attention with it. So I, I really enjoy that aspect. And I think I would even advocate to like adopt some of this for future first Thursday uh, events. So cool. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, we have a new Ricardo. friend. That's us. What's up, Ricardo? Hi everybody. Good to see you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. I uh, had a little broadband problem, but I'm back. Hey, um, we, we, we feel you. We feel you. But you're here. You look good. You're sounding good. Um, Thank welcome. you. And, and I'm sure Glenn will, Glenn will be able to join us. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy shortly, to take too. Glenn's spot while he, uh, he gets re-upped. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Awesome. Well, I think at this stage, guys, we're actually going to have an opportunity to uh, check out, um, sort of go inside of the museum and have a look at some of the exhibits as they are displayed. So that's going to be cool. I plan on checking out the exhibits live this weekend. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and yeah, thanks to uh, thanks to Jonathan for giving a rundown of what we can expect when we, at, when we, when we arrive some of our works that we're seeing here, that we had the opportunity to kind of have some in-depth artist critique discussions uh, the other night um, with Glenn and <laughs> Ricardo. And so that was super fun. And now we're able to kind of see the, the artwork as they're being displayed here. Tali, you, you mentioned about, when you talked about Fusion Fest, how the mission and the focus is sort of bring different cultures and communities together. How how do you see this this initiative from OMA sort of fitting in with that broader that broader vision of bringing our community together? Oh, I love it, and it's so aligned with what we do. And I think it's amazing to see more and more organizations do you know what we um, what we do with so much passion. I think it's amazing, mm -hmm. an amazing initiative. And I think I forgot to mention that at Fusion Fest in some categories like visual arts, music, dance, and film and fashion, we do have a thousand dollar prize for the best fusion. So not only we want to celebrate, you know, our cultures, but we also want to learn about others. Um, so the point is learning about other cultures and trying to fuse into one another um, and creating something new and something unique. So um, yeah. That's amazing. I love that. And and one of the other things that I really loved about um, Create, Listen, Learn is that we really are having the opportunity to see artwork from from all cultures, you know, from all over, different expressions um, from different walks of life, just sort of just revealing themselves and really just expressing how they're feeling it during this time. So it's I love the idea of bringing cultures together because like we talked about on Tuesday night when we reviewed some of the work is that at the core of us, there, we really are more alike than we are different in a lot of ways. And works like this and work and initiatives like what you're doing, uh, Tali, and, and this, this exhibit sort of reminds us of that. So. I loved seeing the artist statements. And um, I think one of the artists mentioned that she was a mom and all of her, how she put her heart into it and her vision as the mom into her work and you know into her blackness and i just i felt so compelled i was like oh my heart it's amazing it was amazing to learn a little bit also about their personal stories in their statements absolutely absolutely yeah and there's there's some of everything represented here i mean we saw fashion we saw photography um it, it just it really ran the gamut of the types of artwork that have been displayed. Yeah. Just taking it all in. Mm. Oh yeah, that work. Yeah. Some of these are, each one has a different message and a different story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Jonathan, from Oma's perspective, how was it, what, what kind of went into, give us a little bit of insight as to what went into sort of pulling this idea and this concept together. I mean, this, this is certainly a little bit different than a normal First Thursday or a, 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 and a first Thursday initiative. So what kind of went into and what sparked this initiative from OMA to begin with? Yeah, I think like what sort of ignited everything was, um, you know, back in June when um, we were all sort of seeing all, all these things and like, you know, um, I kind of right away wanted to take what is going on and give a direct, like, you know, enable folks to, to have a voice and, and show it um, at an institution where it, you know, it's, it's approachable and people go through and, you know, um, it's kind of hard to describe. It's very like reactionary was, was kind of like how this came about. Um, and I just wanted to do something, you know, it's a new season for us, technically. Um, our first Thursday season starts in, in July, technically. Um, although I think we've made the decision because of July 4th in general that, like, we just kind of, like, don't do one that month anymore. Um, so, like, August, with it being a new season, it's our 21st season doing the, the first Thursdays uh, program. I wanted to just really start with something super impactful and um, just showcasing a, a community effort. Um, so that was really big for me. And to kind of like invite folks that might not have like even known that we do this. <laughs> so yeah, that yeah. was a big part of it too. Yeah. I love that, and it's and it's an awesome way to, to showcase local artists who many of us probably should know if we don't already know. Right. But it gives another platform for local artists to to sort of showcase what they what many have been doing for years or or, or the majority of their lives. And I know when we were talking on Tuesday night, Ricardo and Glenn knew several of the artists, um, and I think. I'm just kind of looking at the comments here. It looks like some of the some of the fans are, are coming out in support of some of the different artists. So, Ricardo, give us some some insight on sort of your relationship with some of the local artists in the community and your relationship to the arts, and and why you think a, 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 an an initiative like this is so important. Well, oh, that's a that's a whole lot of questions, but I have a, a whole lot of answers. Uh, so, I you know I've been hosting Nerd Night for you know, over seven years now here in Orlando. And, you know, I've, it's, it's afforded me the opportunity to meet so many remarkable people. And it's, that's essentially what Nerd Night is, is bringing together remarkable people and having them nerd out about something they're passionate about. And obviously that includes a very, very many artists and folks who, whether are doing art as a profession or as a passion, um, but there are some really, really talented people here in Orlando. And I've just been lucky enough to meet many of them, have them speak in my events, uh, become friends with many of them. Uh, we just saw Kwanzaa's piece, uh, I think three ago, uh, three pieces ago, and he's just amazing. You know, I learned so much from him, as I, as I pointed out on Tuesday. And, you know, one of the things I really love about this exhibit is that um, obviously it's capturing a lot of what many of us are feeling, but it's also providing a certain level of solace. And I think that's one of the, the great missions of art has been, you know, for very many years now through generations is that art is able to kind of help bring us through a lot of the pain that we're going through as well as make us think about things. So, and uh, I, I love this piece because it's a good kind of uh, collage of, of all these different feelings, um, but also a celebration, you know, and as I pointed out the other day as well, is that, um, you know, black artists and black art in particular have a long, long, rich legacy of celebrating these, these painful things at the same time, uh, yeah. you know, telling these important stories. And I see so many of these young artists doing that here, and it's just really remarkable. I wish I could be there in person, but I'm, you know, very cautious about the COVID stuff. So uh, I will enjoy it from the confines of, uh, of an, uh, my digital device. But it's it's really amazing what uh, was submitted. And uh, I don't want to say who I voted for, but uh, I had some favorites in there, and uh, I, I hope 
hopefully the, you know, they can connect with the audience as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I certainly had some favorites, but if I'm honest, every single piece that, that I reviewed along with uh, the Black Orlando, um, the Black Orlando tech team, we were moved by all the pieces that we that we saw. And I think the other part of it too, is just like that courage piece. Like it was sort of like courage and confidence to kind of step out and showcase something that you created. And Can I jump in real quick? People. Yeah. I just want to say that I love, although I, I love the the themes of this, this current artist right here that we're showing, I forgot her name, um, but I particularly love the style and I don't want to mm. dive too much into to technique, but I love being able to see brush strokes. Yeah. And I feel like that's so much more imaginative than things that look realistic in terms of paintings, you know, just particularly on, on painting technique. But I've always loved um, the, the kind of the imaginative quality of seeing a brush stroke as opposed to something that looks more like a photograph. Not to say that I don't, as a photographer myself, obviously I love photographs, but in terms of the medium of painting, I, I love that particular artist and what she's been able to do with showing the brush strokes by also having a certain level of, of you know, familiarness, uh, familiarity to it. I really appreciate if, that technique. If I could add really quick, just to piggyback on that, the brush strokes are amazing. I agree. And there's something about the way that she's able to to manipulate the light with those brush strokes. And I think, and I um I I feel like um her title, the title of those pieces, when her artist statement, she talks about that, you know, about light. And so wonderful work, both you know, kind of the emotion that she brings out and and the technique that she was able to apply to the mm -hmm. canvas. So. Yeah, wonderful. Just yeah. yeah. Agreed. And the artist's name, Maciel Baltry. I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly, but yeah. it, her name has been mm -hmm. added to the comments. So yes, beautiful, beautiful work. And you know, while we're shouting out artists, you know, we can kind of go ahead and shout out some of the other artists who have uh, been featured. A Kwanzaa, of course, Ashley Kennedy, uh, Carlos Gardenia. Jamil, Jesus Marin, Lindsay, Thibault, Maciel, who we've mentioned, Rahun, um, Tasani, Tom Parker, Alexia Torres. I'm hoping I said everyone's name correctly, but <laughs> everyone, everyone has been featured um, in this in this video clip that we're seeing here, and and we just wanted to make sure that we uh, that we shouted y'all out. If, if they're not watching. Viewers, tag them, tag them in the comments. Be sure to share as well um, and make sure that everyone is able to tune in on this live broadcast. And so as we're as we're kind of highlighting some some of the ones that stood out to us, um, uh, Tali, tell, tell us about anyone or any particular artwork or piece that is, has stood out to you, whether you're viewing it now or or if you viewed them during um, during your voting. I'm going to be very honest that I judge everything based on my emotions. Like I would look at a piece and I was not technical at all. I would just like the reaction that I was getting from seeing that art. And I think it was a couple before that, the one that was like kind of, again, I'm, I'm a mother. So the ones that portray kids and moms, those are the ones that really hit me um hard and it's so heartwarming and sometimes kind of i can feel that pain that love and that pain mm. and that struggle um so the one i think that it's like have hands and then one of the hands has an eye on it i think that was my favorite i could totally see that in my living room yes yeah, mm, yeah. 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 and and i'm not a art connoisseur or a specialist yeah. but I was just looking at it for several minutes. And once I was done, I went back to this one and it was just like, it, there's so many meanings, I think, in that piece. And it really- Okay, can I jump in real quick? Uh, Tali is not being completely honest. She is an art connoisseur. <laughs> she, listen, I, she has an art household. Her husband is a very, very talented musician. And I believe her daughter is a very talented musician as well. Yeah. And an actress, so let's- <laughs> don't downplay the quality of your household. Uh, and a martial artist, too, as I remember. Uh, that's, wow. Is, is that correct? <laughs> yes, that's correct. So, I mean, that, that's that's an art connoisseur if I ever heard one. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Art in many forms. Yeah, this one. Um, thanks, Ricardo. You're very kind. But um, 
those drawings also with the hair. So my my daughter is mixed. I'm Asian, um, Latin Asian, and my my husband is uh, Latin Black, and um, so we're big big mix. And my daughter has curly hair. So um, for me, as again uh, from a mm -hmm. mom standpoint, that other piece that is actually like a collection of the hair. It was also touching to me because with I've been learning how to do her hair and um, and more and more she's been asking me for more styles and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, that was also something that touched me as a power statement, you know, uh, it's just so powerful. I love it. Yes, agree. This this work was definitely one of my favorites, a standout piece for me, because it's just that that emotional a piece that you that you mentioned, yeah. Holly. Yeah, that's certainly what this what this artist did for me. I can totally relate to each of those different hairstyles, and I know the the connection to hair to hairstyles and politics and yeah and and policing styles. So um, so yeah, that that was definitely a more of an emotional connection for me too. Um, and another another kind of important thing to remember is that m most, if not all, of these artwork pieces are for sale. Some of these items are for sale in the OMA gift shop. So that's another great opportunity if you're able to make it down to the museum this weekend to, in addition to checking out the works, checking out what's for sale shop as well. This would be some really, really cool. Early, early, early Christmas presents. Um, <laughs> really, really special uh, to gift to your loved ones. So I um, um, guys, we're going to uh, transition to hear from one of our first artists, which I'm very excited about. Um, Alexia Torres is going to be up first, and we'll be able to hear a little bit from her. I'm Wait, is she muted down. or or my volume is my volume low? She is muted, so we're gonna we're gonna see if we can get her sound going here. Yeah, it's all right. All right. <laughs> new, new times, yeah. These <laughs> bound to happen for sure, for sure. So yeah, Alexa will be back up with us in a moment. But did want to mention um, thanks a huge Publix Charities for being a sponsor of almost First Thursday. Love Publix, thanks for being a great supporter of First Thursdays and in particular, Create, Listen, Learn. <clears throat> All right, I think we have, maybe we have Alexia back. If not, we will, uh, we'll, we'll continue to, We'll continue discussing art while we get to one of the local artists on board. Um, Glenn, I kind of want to get your insight um, as we are getting Alexia set up here. Oh, I think we're ready. And tonight you are seeing my pieces, Woman and America. So my motivation for creating these two pieces, um, it comes from basically the same place, um, just kind of different versions of it. So for America, it's based on confusion and contradictory, um, being unsure of where you stand in a field of red, white, and blue. Um, and knowing that you are the foundation of it. Whereas woman takes that pain and that sorrow and that fight that um, you went through and changes all of that into triumph and glory and teaches you to grow or glow through all of these situations. These pieces relate to like my overall technique um, or my overall focus because I usually try to use myself and then the things that I go through um, to create pieces about women, um, women going through sorrow or pain, but then finding ways to get through because that's just what we do. Um, and I find that when I'm creating, even though I might be using something as a reference or um, a strong female figure, 
the painting will always come out resembling myself because really what I'm painting is me and my pain and what I'm going through. And you'll see that through my works if you continue to follow me and um, see how this journey continues. My dream piece, oh wow, what would it be? So one of my biggest in inspirations is Shepard Fairey. And um, you can see in my America piece, I got a lot of inspiration from his power and equality piece. I think he is amazing in the fact that he is all around the world and everyone can see his art um, speaking volumes about discrimination and equality and things like that. Um, my my dream piece or my biggest aspiration would be to create something, create a piece of art that could be seen by the entire world. Um, no matter what, if you wanted to see it or you didn't want to see it, it would be there in your face unapologetically. Um, and you wouldn't have a choice but to see it and believe it and know it's there and face it, kind of like racism. But overall, it's just an honor to be able to create my art and have it out there for people to see and enjoy. Um, that is, it fills my soul enough just for that um, and just to have this opportunity. So thank you so much. Very nice. Very nice. Love that. I love hearing directly from from the artist, right. her work from reviewing, her work stood out to me because it was like the fire and the woman emerging through the fire. And it, for me, it represented him and, and coming through adversity. And that was exactly what she was trying to portray. So very cool. And if I could add really quick, I think it's amazing that her uh, inspiration is Shepard Fairey. Once she said that, I made the connection. I was like, wow, that's a really cool reference. Um, yeah, so. mm -hmm. for sure, for sure. I think this is Ashley. Love, love. So Ashley Kennedy, she was the artist who made the, the, the jewelry, the earrings, and those are just so beautiful. Tali, I know you and I are probably like, I'm, I need to get my hands on a pair of these right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was looking through the art and then I saw those earrings. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. They're beautiful and there's, this, and there's a message behind them, so. Yeah. Cool. Hi, my name is Carlos Carbonell, and I painted Ancestry. The motivation for this piece was my country of origin, Panama, and my own family. Uh, Panama is one of the few countries in Latin America that's of a very even uh, or very mixed 
ethnicity and race. And it's actually about a third each European, African, and indigenous ancestry. And uh, even my family is as well. If you've been taking 23andMe and confirms it. And you can see it in the color of our skin. It varies from pale skin, blue eyes, to very indigenous looking, to uh, dark skin, which in America would be considered uh, black. Um, I am um, white presenting. I benefit from life and privilege, and a lot of Latinos do. And I think sometimes we forget our background. And um, it, this day and age, in this moment in history, I think it's important for us to connect to the black community and understand our background. Um, the America's original sin, 600,000 slaves that were brought to America, pales in comparison to what happened in Latin America where 14 million slaves were brought. Yet this is something that we don't talk about. Uh, but in America, I think it's important for Hispanics to understand and connect and support the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I, I think that it's also important for the rest of Americans to understand that these identities live between us or within us and that Hispanics should play a part in that conversation as well, one way or another. Um, this work relates to my technique um, in, um, in, in terms of utilizing acrylic and somewhat mixed media, something that I've been experimenting with, uh, but I've also been inspired by the Cusco School of Art, which is a, a very old school that was established by European settlers in South America to essentially teach indigenous people how to paint in the style of the Spanish Greeks. Now they incorporated their uh, their own technique and, and colors and uh, um, as the motif, which I also inserted in my portrait. And uh, and each one of the portraits has um, is a little bit of a of elements of that particular culture inserted into it um my dream for uh, or my dream project rather would be a mural in orlando and my dreams for the future would be to do just that to leave a physical indelible mark in orlando uh, but also an indelible mark in uh, through my actions and what i contribute to the community i love this community and uh, uh i hope to do as much as possible uh, professionally uh, profits um, and also any type of contribution that I could do to make Orlando a better place. Wow. Carlos touched on a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of layers there. Yeah. Yeah. And can I just say that I know Carlos said he wants to leave a mark on Orlando. He's the man has already left a mark in Orlando. He's done a fantastic job with that in the last few years. So thank you, Carlos. And I just want to point out, I, I really appreciated that his work um, highlighted the experience of folks from Latin American countries, Afro-Latinos, um, who often get left out of the conversation uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, not good ones, but um, it's important to highlight their struggles as well within the movement. And so remember that as he pointed out that, you know, uh, the slave trade also included folks in the Latin Absolutely. American countries. So, yes. So thank you for that, Carlos. Work, Carlos. And he even touched on a colorism, another another layer to this very uh, very complex um, this very complex conversation. So, great work. Who's up next? Hi, my name is Gardenia Alston, and I'm showing a painting called More Than Words. I started this project by asking people to share the words that describe 2020 to them, and I wasn't worried if they were positive or negative, but I did want to make sure that they were true to them. Um, the responses from my very diverse group. Um, there's so many people represented in this, and the more responses that I've gotten, the more inspired um, I am about them. And uh, this process of research is also very true to how I create and develop my art. Um, my paintings are, for the most part, abstract. However, it always starts with research and a connection that I try to find so that I can convey it on a canvas and tell a story. For this particular one, you'll see that 
there are some really bold colors that are coming together, almost merging, but they still keep their identity. And that's really representative of us. And it's showing how mutual respect can make our coming together stronger and allowing us to keep our own identity and show our very best. Um, that was very important to me to show Hi, I'm with this context. It was also important to me that the words were shown, um, but that they weren't necessarily the main focus. And the reason I did this is because the more I heard from people, the more I heard that it's so much more than the words. I framed the edge of the canvas with all the words, but I wanted the center to show a little more. And that's why I added the heart and it's dripping. It's dripping with people's emotions, with people's stories, with people's the reason I think joy. Um, the words that you see that are larger are some of the words that repeated throughout the process. Um, but they weren't the only words that were repeated. They were just the ones that were most common. Um, so that heart really represents people's truths. And when you start start to hear people and see their truth, you will see that the words are, they pale in comparison to the person that's behind it. Um, and that's what I wanted to show in this painting. And um, it became my dream project. At the moment, this is my dream project. I continue to gather words and I continue to develop this into a series. And if you would like to join and be a part of this journey, I welcome you and I would be honored if you would connect and send me an email with your words. My email is 30gardenias at gmail.com. Again, that's 30gardenias at gmail.com. And stay tuned because there's definitely more of this story to tell. Very cool. So Gardenia sort of involved others into the creation of her work. And as she was explaining it and looking over at her work, I noticed new things that I didn't notice um, the first time in reviewing. Like the heart is actually dripping. It's actually pouring out itself um, with emotion. So beautiful work. Um, the colors, the fact that she is continuing to incorporate others as she continues on along with her project, I think is amazing. So beautiful job, Gardenia. Hi, I'm Jamal B. Johnson. I'm the artist behind Eight Minutes and 46 Seconds to Immortality, um, The Ticklish Boy, and uh, My Delicate Spirit. I am a uh, portrait uh, artist, I would say. Um, I uh, use my portraits with non-representational figures and, and, uh, and shapes to uh, kind of symbolize my emotions when it comes to the portrait that I'm painting. The motivation to my work uh, comes from uh, my perspective. My work comes from the need to, to speak out on this harsh country and how historically and currently we are being treated as uh, less than human. So my work uh, came together once I realized the idea and the phrase that I came up with to describe my work is more human than black. More human than black uh, is, uh, means a lot of things, but in its, in its entirety, is the fact that we're not treated as humans in this country. Uh, I feel we're not protected. We're not, uh, we're not viewed as valuable uh, as human beings in this country. So more human than black represents the idea that we are more human than we are black. And to share our humanity through my paintings so that when people see us, they don't just see 
our, this color of our skin. So I go out of my way and I consciously don't use the color black or brown because I want these colors to represent their soul, to represent who they are. So when you see them, you only have emotions. You only have the thought of this is a person, this is a human being. Yeah. And that's my overall uh, message and my overall theme throughout the More Human the Black series that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. We'll see uh, splatter, sometimes representative of hearts or blood, wherever your imagination takes you. But these all represent the idea of a spirit or a soul. I paint these portraits to commemorate them, but also to show how human they were. It is to be a symbol of, of peace and, and love amongst us as humans, um, but it's also uh, to remind people, like, do not forget about these people who have been slain. Uh, do not forget about these people who have been killed for no reason other than the color of their skin. Because I know it's trending right now on Twitter, but I've been talking about this since uh, 2016 yeah. and my work. And uh, I won't ever stop talking about this uh, because if I was to die unjustly, I wouldn't want anyone to ever stop talking about me. I wouldn't want anyone to ever forget me uh, because these people deserve to be memorialized forever. Uh, if we don't paint them, if we don't represent them, if I don't represent them, who will, you know? And uh, I don't want to be trending. I don't want to be that guy that's just jumping on the bandwagon. Uh, this is going to be my life's work. As far as the technique um, that I use, uh, I am, um, I like to use the juxtaposition of the re representational and the non-representational. So using these portraits to also uh, to also live and move among things that are non-representational. Um, to me, this is how I see them in my head. They're like um, faces and colors and sometimes interweaving, sometimes completely separate. Every so often they'll interweave and they'll, they'll touch. Um, uh, and those are two similar emotions coming together. Um, but sometimes I want them to be separate because uh, I like to think of my emotions as separate entities that, that float around in my head and, and sometimes they clash with each other. And sometimes they're contradictory. To me, it's the emotions that make me human. And, and it's the emotions that I want you to feel when you're seeing the portraits and seeing these images. The soft colors make it easy on the eyes so that you could just wander because I want you to look at these shapes and look at these these interesting um, washed like splashes of color and and let your emotions and your thoughts just kind of run wild. More human than black. That is that was powerful. Yeah. 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 Incredibly profound. Um, yeah. I really like that he, he had, you know, he came with that perspective and he's kind of been cultivating that in his work, um, that idea of color as opposed to seeing the skin tone, you're seeing their soul, you're seeing their emotion. Um, and I also really appreciate um, that he talks about the symbols kind of that he uses and that, you know, there are these ideas kind of floating in his head and it's up to us to kind of find the meaning. Um, as because as we discussed the other day, I'm just so intrigued by the different elements that he, he's decided to use in his pieces. So, um, so yeah, so many, so many great points that he made. And re really like his work. I think my first impression of his work was it was like a big world map laid oh, out. Wow. You know, oh, yeah, that's a great. Point. It, and we're all like looking at George Floyd now, or at the kid and. I just feel like the whole world is connected in that. Wow. Even though it's not a world map, but somehow in my head, that's how, that's no, the I, just, I, got I totally, 
totally see that just As now that you said that. Exactly. Wonderful. Just putting like two pieces in the show are of timeless and it's time. Timeless is a resin cast piece I did with um, stained glass wings. And it's time is a painting I create with acrylic. Um, Timeless is part of my series of healing angels. I call it healing hearts. Each angel represents a healing process in human life. In the case of um, Timeless, it's talking about the emptiness that we have in our hearts. And just time is the only one who can fix it. So that's why I call it Timeless. Inside the empty heart, in the chest, you will see an hourglass that represent the time that every human being needs for him. His body is full of hearts because no matter what, we never stop loving. And the winds, stained glass, represent new morning, new beginnings. No matter what, every day is new and we can gain force and start healing. Um, in the future, I would love to create a, one of my angels uh, at least 15 feet tall. Mm. Um, I would love to see one of my angels tall. So my goal is finish at least 13 to 15 angels for my first solo show, Healing Hearts. Thank you. Love. His was one of my favorites, mm. the, the statue, um, and it's it's represent angels and he has big plans for to continuing his work surrounding by angels. But I just love the colors mm -hmm. and I loved how in for me it represented like it was a symbol of hope, like with the, the heart, which is kind of looks like wings and all the colors, which is really beautiful. I could totally see that being displayed in, in my home and in, in many other homes as well. Mm -hmm. Lindsay. Hi, my name is Lindsay Tebow, and I'm the artist of the piece Stomach Mama. I was motivated to create this piece. I was called to create it when I saw the title of this first Thursday show being focused on identifying your role in this crucial moment in history. I immediately knew my role. I am a mother, and I am a white mother of a black daughter. I have been called to duty, just as every mother has been called to duty in regards to Black Lives Matter, in regards to police brutality, and in regards to racism. Mm -hmm. And I have wanted to express this feeling, this deep down feeling of my job, my duty, my role as a white woman, as a white mother, of stepping up and empowering and amplifying the voices of Black people and bringing Despite what is going on in our world. This work relates to my technique and overall focus in the fact that it is very textural. I'm very interested in layering, texture, pattern, and design in my work. I really enjoyed using acrylic paint in order to create these dense, thick outlines of all of the women holding posters. I think it has a really interesting design to the finished piece, and I really love the texture it creates. My dream project and hopes and dreams for my future as an artist are simply to continue to develop. I find constant new motivation. There's things that happen in the world, for example, right now, which are really empowering me and giving me a voice that I've been wanting to share through my art. My dreams and hopes are to continue to grow, create artwork in this beautiful art studio, and continue to learn from others and share my voice as well. Oh, yeah, I know this was one of your favorites, um, just coming from the perspective of a mom. How do you feel kind of hearing more about her story, about what what inspired this piece for her? Well, it was very relatable. Um, uh, being in a mixed, being, having a mixed family myself, it was very relatable. When I, when I look at her work, I could 
totally relate to it. And um, yeah, it's um, it's a it's something that I feel like all moms are feeling the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. And it's like we were summoned. If if you mm -hmm. were not a part of this before, and I'm seeing that, I'm seeing a lot of my Caucasian uh, moms, friends who are now reading different books that they were not interested in before. And um, I think that's amazing, that's fantastic. And that being transferred into visual arts, it's it's pretty awesome. Absolutely. I'm proud of this moms. <laughs> yes. Thank you, moms, for all that you do. Hi, my name is Maciel Beltry. I currently have three pieces in the show. The first is Light Up the Sky, Inclusion to Seclusion, and Only Light, Day 23 and Day 32. Um, my motivation for my work comes from wanting to shine just some light into this uncertain world that we currently live in. And I definitely choose my muses very carefully. These are women who have suffered through domestic violence, survived it, others who are truly dealing with this pandemic and have been affected in their homes and not being able to support their families. And just with that uncertainty and that anxiety, I definitely feel like we all are kind of inclusive with this seclusion and we're all going through it together and having these circumstances happen to all of us have affected each person in their own way, but nobody's been unscathed and it's definitely been a time of reflection. Um, this work relates to my techniques and my overall focus, really, because the work that I do really touches on vulnerability, especially in women, and showing the weakness, or the ne not necessarily weakness, but showing the strength in that, strength and the vulnerability, showing you cry, you scream, you break apart, you allow, you let that absorb you, let it and, and, and accept it for what it what, for what it is and for what it can do for you, that you can get up the next day and be better for it and be stronger and know this isn't how I want to live, how, how we can better things and how it can really make us better. Yeah. And definitely my dream project would be to allow myself and other artists to work together from different backgrounds, from different mediums, and really come together to build a safe place and actually give everybody a voice or the voices we can give in this time, especially with fear and anxiety and let it all go and allow them to have that space to let all these feelings out to come out better on the other side. Thank you. If love, love, love. If I Lynn, what just, it, oh my yeah, God. please go ahead. And, and and what I love about what she said too is something that I'm um I actually just noticed with the show is the uh, representation of the power of women, mothers, like so many things of motherhood. And as a son who loves his mother, um, and loves <laughs> his sisters, like I'm, I it, like I have chills, like I might start crying. But it's just so important to look back at so many different movements in the world, you know, that were started by women and that were led by women. And I feel like it's, you know, just like she said, with all the darkness that's happening, all the tragedy, oh, yeah. the triumph of having and seeing so many mothers, so many women come together um, and just support each other. There was a, there was, um, I want to say recently, social media, there was a challenge that women were doing and they were just, um, yes. you know, doing, and I thought that was the most amazing thing. So um, yeah, props to her, props to, um, everyone that realizes the strength of women and are continuing to kind of, you know, hold them up and uh, let them lead. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I, I love that. That's um, that's something that's uh, that we we were realizing that we need more of more women leaders out in the front. You know, some of us guys just got to step back and let the women, you know, lead and you know bring some peace into the world, bring some light into the world. So that's just me. Oh, cool. <laughs> let's snap it up, Tali. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Ra. This is Hello, my Ra is a black, and my pieces are in his mother and his mother and his mother too, and bad religion. The motivation behind my works as of late comes from my experience with being a gay black man in my community, in this society, uh, this America, this Western world that we are living in, and the climate that we are in, and what I've seen what I've felt, what I still see and what I still feel and how I've managed to navigate through this experience given everything that comes along with it. 
these works relate to my overall focus uh, because they tell these stories. For example, and his mother and his mother and his mother too, uh, is essentially about the guidance that I received from the black mothers and mothers <laughs> before me. Um, I think that the experience of a gay black man is so very similar to that of a black woman in America because we are in a society that is hyper masculine and that is controlled by hetero identifying cisgendered white men. The piece Bad Religion is inspired by the song of the same name uh, by a prominent man, queer black man, an artist by the name of Frank Ocean. And for me, the song is about his experience with dealing with unrequited love that a lot of us in this community feel. Um, it deals with, to me, a little bit of internalized homophobia. Uh, because of this experience, because of how we are told to view ourselves, uh, because people deem us less worthy as a human, um, because we decided to love another man, and because we are not following what they view as God's law. And I wanted the piece to convey that emotion and that experience, but I also wanted it to to show that resiliency that is built. My dream project would have to be to create a movement uh, similar to the Harlem Renaissance and to be able to collaborate with other black artists and other queer black artists and as one claim our place in the society and reclaim our worth. And my hopes for the future is that we can be seen and we can have that representation um, everywhere for everyone. And yeah, that's, 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 yeah, that's my hopes for the future. Love, love, love. Yeah. We need to be friends. <laughs> yeah. I will, let's all be friends. Yes, please. These, these people are, are too cool and too <laughs> like out of this stratosphere to, for me to be friends right. with. But oh, amazing. Like hearing his perspective and going deeper into the pieces that he portrayed. Because I, I remember on Tuesday night, when we, the three of us had different viewpoints on yeah. What, what does he mean by this? And we, we each came to it, came away with it, kind of feeling something a little bit different and hearing his explanation of it just sort of brings it all full circle for me. For sure. Yeah. And, and I, and I can definitely say um, we've been friends for a long time. I have been encouraging him to show his work. I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of you raw. Um, and I love that in his explanation, he talked about kind of that religious spiritual element, something I've always gotten from him and, and how it's so important for all of us to be able to be seen and to kind of under try to understand each other's perspectives. So kudos, I, I'm a fan, always will be. How about Beautiful you? Beautiful job, <laughs> Ali, thoughts? It was just mm -hmm. amazing. And I, I'm loving seeing and getting to know them through these interviews yeah. because of course we could, we saw their work, we saw their statement, mm -hmm. but um, seeing them actually expressing yeah. themselves and like answering all those questions about their work, it just creates a whole new level of like likeness and, and like, it just goes so deep. It's like, oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. This, is, this is awesome. This is so awesome. My name is Tasani Durrett and I'm a visual storyteller. My pieces are Power and Knowledge, Crown, and the pursuit for justice. These pieces are from my current series of stories that I've titled Crown. My motivation for Crown stems from the misrepresentation of black women's hair in today's society and the fight for the decriminalization of black hair and black representation. These pieces relate to my personal technique and practice of telling stories 
through line drawing. For these pieces, I've used only one line to draw. Wow. One line drawing is such a fun challenge for me, and I enjoy using the simplicity of one line drawing to convey complex and powerful messages. My dream project was to be a part of an international art and architecture exhibition where my drawings that tell stories about racial, social, and economic conditions could be seen and understood by others across the globe. Uh, today, I see storytelling as a lost art, mm -hmm. and I hope for stories to become tools of social connectedness. Cool. So yeah. one line drawing, I didn't, I would have never guessed that. Me that. <laughs> Honestly, that was one of my infatuations when we discussed it the other day. And I, I'm just, I'm, I can't speak. Um, so I took a class um, at Creality School of Art um, and it was, I wanna say it was like either, um, you know, beginning abstraction or, or something of the sort. And we did a piece like that with the one line. So I know it is not easy. And for her to pull it off like that and to have that message, I'm just oh. in floored. Um, I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah. I mean? I'm so impressed. I love the simplicity, but it's so complex. Behind all the simplicity, it's just so mm -hmm. much more mm -hmm. uh, complexity. And I, it was one of my favorites, too. Yeah, for sure. Hi, I'm Tom Parker. The title of my piece for the Orlando Museum of Art First Thursdays, Create, Listen, and Learn, is Survival in America. My motivation for this piece is based on what's happening in America and the world today and how uncomfortable I am. And I suspect others are uncomfortable as well. The piece will probably make others uncomfortable as they view this. The technique that I've used is acrylic collage and found objects. I've used that technique for a number of years and it's found in practically all of my pieces today. So my dream project and hope for the future, well, the dream project is a project that I'm working on called Big Red Apple Project, and is an installation. And my hope for the future is we get back to normal, and we have these terrific receptions in places like the Orlando Museum. So thank you very much. Yeah, I love this piece too. It it hits you. It's it's there's so many elements to it, and the fact that he used the the, the found objects component of it just adds different layers and different complexities to it. But it's 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 beautiful, but it's it's very haunting as well. Um, I, this is definitely one of my favorites as well. It's definitely an interesting piece for me. And seeing that, I, I can definitely see. The struggle, the challenge of you know surviving in America in his piece. So, for sure, very, very interesting, very very interesting work. Yeah. yeah. Hi guys, thank you so much for having me. My name is Alexia Torres, and tonight you are seeing my pieces, Woman in America. So my motivation for creating these two pieces, um, it comes from basically the same place, um, just kind of different versions of it. So for America, it's based on confusion and contradictory, um, being unsure of where you stand in a field of red, white, and blue, um, and knowing that you are the foundation of it. Whereas woman takes that pain and that sorrow and that fight that, um, we went through and changes all of that into triumph and glory and teaches you to grow or glow through all of these situations. These pieces relate to like my overall technique um, or my overall focus because I usually try to use myself and then the things that I go through um, to create pieces about women, um, women going through sorrow or pain, but then finding ways to get through because that's 
just what we do. Um, and I find that when I'm creating, even though I might be using something as a reference or I'm um, a strong female figure, the painting will always come out resembling myself because really what I'm painting is me and my pain and what I'm going through. And you'll see that through my works if you continue to follow me and um, see how this journey continues. My dream piece, oh wow. Cool. So we heard from Alexia again talking about her work. I think, I think the the one the one thing that I'm left away with after hearing all the artists actually speak on video about their piece is passion. Like, even as they're explaining some of them, some of them seem like on the verge of tears. Yeah. Others seem like the, the, there's def. It's not just this is not a hobby. These are these are professionals. These are people who have been doing this like I said earlier, for either years or the majority of their lives. And even if they're new into it, they've been pushed into creating artwork and creating artistic expression through pain or through struggle or through um, this current pandemic or, or crises that, are, that have been happening over the past few months, social justice movements. So I think for me, seeing the videos from each of the artists just further kind of confirms their passion for for what they do. And that's just so inspiring for, for someone like me to be able to look look at other people's and see their passion for, for what they do. It's just very, very inspiring. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Thomas. Really, first and foremost, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity. The motivation behind this piece were my parents. My parents were the ones who my mother is an amazing artist and my father was also awesome. He actually taught me as a young as a young kid. He was a teacher. Um, he did murals and everything all over the city. Um, he actually passed away less than a year ago. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to honor him by um, submitting this piece. Um, as I was drawing this piece two years ago, I thought about the children, my children, and their views of the world and how, and how it impacts them. I also wanted to paint this picture so that the audience can take a step back and reflect for themselves how they contribute to that analysis. This work reflects on my technique, maybe 10 to 15 percent. I usually don't draw this type of art. I wanted to step outside of the country. Um, having to be so descriptive when creating an atmosphere that I don't want to be in for some nation to dream. It's like a painting. You know, um, Moonlighting, moon, the moonlight over the, the, the lake, trees, the forest, such things like that. I want to put, boost my morale, put me in happiness. My dream project looking ahead, um, it was always to do a retreat with a group of inspiring artists, share each other's creativity, and express them on a blank canvas somewhere on the countryside. Another dream of mine looking for the future. I'm going to be able to build a studio where local artists are able to come and share their ideas. Again, thank you for the opportunity of having me share my message with you. Thank you. Almas, yeah, his was one of my other favorites as well with the, the two little girls, the little black girl, the little white girl, and they were looking out the window and they had two slightly different perspectives of what was happening around them. Um, and the fact that it was all birthed out of him being father and he's sort of trying to look look at look at things through the eyes of his children, I thought was really beautiful. And um, again, really, really inspiring. And I love his passion for his as well, so. Agree. I agree too, Bad. very compelling. Yes. And, and I mean, my first look at it was like, oh, it's it gave me some sadness because of the whole scene and then taking a few more moments with it i'm like wow you know this is this is reality and then how and then that urge of you know how as as a mom again raising the future generation like how can we change that how can we make um that this generation will not be seeing things like that so uh it really yeah yeah beautiful beautifully done um I so enjoyed the opportunity to, to hear directly from the artists. And just as a quick reminder to everyone, the, the artwork will be up, Create, Listen, Learn exhibit will be up 
at Orlando Museum of Art through this weekend. So we certainly encourage you to go in person, check it out. Um, there is a link to that you can use in the chat to actually reserve your time. There's a there's just a very simple um, process to do before you actually go to make sure that you're able to get in with you and your family with no hiccups. So you can use the link there, oma.guide to reserve your space if, when you are going to visit the museum this weekend. So, hey, Jonathan, happy to have you back with us. We've, we've been having a blast hearing directly from the artists and I know that you're back to uh, share some important information and announcements with us. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm right with you guys, by the way. Um, it's like seeing all these is just so incredibly humbling. Yeah. Um, and and um, yeah, just that like the thought of, of having an understanding, but us all also like embracing one another it is so special and I'm just so glad we were we were able to, to make this happen for everyone um, with that we and I'm thankful for you guys too to be able to to be partners with us and um, you know hopefully we can do all this again sometime and um, and yeah look at some more some more fun art so the best of show and unfortunately I don't think we're able to get her on uh, right now, but it's uh, Tasani. Yay! And uh, yeah, that was chosen by our team. And yeah, congrats to to Tasani. I think she's in the um, Facebook comments. So if everyone wants to, to congratulate on there, uh, please do. And yeah, I think um, we've we've covered a lot tonight yeah <laughs> it's been it's yeah. been a lot um very engaging i'm just yeah i'm so happy that we were able to do this um once again just a quick reminder that we're open uh later on saturday um mm -hmm. as of pig boys date night you don't have to have a, a date night ticket per se it's just kind of like an additional thing that you can sign up for with them um so oh sweet we have footage yes there's and more. i think this yes. is Tassani's one line one line yes wow. <laughs> incredible so amazing oh sweet so yeah so amazing. the raw footage yeah beautiful so very beautiful. very well deserved mm -hmm. yeah congratulations to Sani. This was tough, man. I mean, oh, yeah. this was a tough everybody one. came yeah. with no, it. it. I, yes, like everybody came with it. This was really, really difficult, but so enjoyable as well. Like what, what an amazing opportunity. I want to say just thanks to the artists. Thanks to the artists for the opportunity to review and discuss your, your work work that has clearly come from your heart. Thank you. Thanks to each artist for, for that amazing opportunity for sharing your work with all of us because we've all been blessed. We've all been able to, to glean something from each of your pieces. So, so thank you to the artists. Mm -hmm. cool. Yes, I echo that. Thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's been an honor for me to be part of the selection committee. I am beyond words. I'm all emotions. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, why do I feel like I'm on the verge of tears right now? Like, I'm, this has been too much like art creativity for me. Expression it's just, and yeah. And yes. I love it. And um, I just I don't want to forget to mention that uh, Fusion Fest website that was shown here in the beginning. It was actually developed by Mike Felix, who is one of the founders of Black Orlando Tech. Yeah. Um, and. I also want to say thank you to Oma, who has always since year one has opened up a space during first Thursday for us to come and, and promote the event. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Jonathan, for having us. Yes. Um, been a fan of Oma for years, been an associate. I'm so grateful for all the folks there. Um, College of Arts and Humanities thanks you all, of course, for, for having us. and. Um, be on the lookout for Diversity Week at the John C. Hitt Library, UCF's library. Uh, more of this to come, more great presentations. We'll actually have um, David Madison and Molly Lawson speaking um, from the museum at Diversity Week. So 
Um, there'll be creativity. We might even have Dr. Stella Sung performing for us as well. So yes, I know. So in the works, check it out. Um, be on the lookout, Diversity Week at um, University of Central Florida. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll echo the thanks as well on behalf of Black Orlando Tech OMA. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy, Jonathan, the entire team. Thank you for reaching out, for engaging with us and for providing this amazing platform. Thanks for the entire OMA team who have been supporters of Bot. I saw Mabel in the chat a little earlier. Hey, Mabel, thanks so much for all of your support from um, Punch Planet and, and just everyone for your uh, amazing support of Black Orlando Tech and our mission. Be sure to check out blackorlandotech.org to learn more about how you can get involved and support minorities in tech careers and tech startups. So this was awesome, guys. Woo! Indeed, indeed. Oh, and really quick, if you wanna, um, if anyone wants to submit for the next First Thursday, ooh, yeah. it, Mother Nature is mad right now, guys. Right? Um, Are you just under? <laughs> so yeah, the um, gotta, gotta we'll put a link in our comments <laughs> of how to submit. Uh, you can definitely submit in person too if you'd rather like bring in um, like actual images and fill out the form. We obviously right now prefer if you do it online, so that's through our website. Uh, we'll put that in the yeah, there it is, right there in the comments. Um, yeah, and then we'll be doing this again in September. It's the I think it's the 12th UCF Eclectic Night Show. We're getting like the Super Bowl Ooh. at this point. Um, <laughs> XII, oh, yeah. I, mean, I think we're calling it. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, College of Arts as well. So, yeah, just comes full circle. Indeed. Awesome. So, yeah, thank you guys. All right. Well, I think with that, we yeah. will we will say good night. And um, we'll see you this weekend if you visit OMA. And again, be sure to check out OMA's website for all the additional details uh, for everything that's happening uh, coming up. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We'll see you later. Thank Have a great you. night. Good night. Bye.